First they put Leo in a movie where he mostly grunts and, and now it's Clooney too. Has Hollywood given up on its leading man's ability to speak? Hi, my name is Anton and this is my take, a what the flick segment where community contributors like myself get to put in their two shackles about a movie of their choice. Hail Caesar! I found this movie to be severely underwhelming. It had a lot going for it, amazing cast, fantastic choreographies, great comedic moment, plot twists coming out of its periscope and yet it never came together as a whole, it just disintegrated and ashes in my mouth. So bummed out. The film is positioned to be a comedic homage to the golden age of Hollywood. And the trailer sets you up to believe that it is about the abduction of this big movie star du jour played by George Clooney. But that's actually a fairly small part of the story. There is a number of concurrent subplots taking place, mostly connected through the involvement of the studio fixer played by Josh Brolin, who, by the way, put on a really sharp performance. And the whole thing is occurring in the span of a single workday. By the way, studio fixer, think of it as Congress whip. Frank Underwood for, for movie studios. Him or Don Draper, possibly. Same type of position. And this was the storyline that I actually found most interesting as a window into the life of the studio executive, which I don't recall being explored in this much detail in any other films. Hard job, by the way, studio fixer, so he's considering other offers and we see him do it, but it doesn't really add anything to the film, nor do a lot of other pieces which end up having a self-indulgent vibe to them as a result. And there is a number of other things going on with a bunch of different characters and a lot of what you see happening on screen is done really well, if you take it piece by piece. There are fantastic dance numbers, really entertaining conversations and a lot of situational humor and intriguing conflicts and it's all done very artfully and it does stylistic justice to that time in Hollywood history but despite all these excellent elements I left the theater bereft of satisfaction because it simply doesn't create a cohesive whole. With that in mind, I would recommend this movie to people suffering from anterograde amnesia, where you can't form any memories and you just watch what's happening on screen moment by moment. You will find this film delightful. But for the rest of the viewers, I see this as a massive bummer and one that is hard to forgive because the movie was originally written back in 2004, so it's not like there wasn't enough time to make corrections to the script. But enough on that. Time is money, so let's talk money. Coen brothers know how to stretch a buck. With all of its lavishly paid cast, this movie's budget of meager 22 million is roughly half the budget of Ride Along 2. How did they pull that off? That's amazing to me. They must have sold it as a passion project for these actors because it just don't add up. Overall, I'll give this movie a 6 out of 10 because it gets a lot of things right, but the few that it gets wrong are crucial. That's my take. What do you guys think? Leave your comments below and I'll see you next week. Toodles.